So let's do a quick summary of the key results from this unit. The goal of this unit was to define momentum in special relativity, something so that the law of conservation of momentum is true in all inertial reference frames. To do so, we thought about displacements in space-time, not just in space, so dt and dx, possibly dy, dz. And then momentum is m times this velocity-like term, the displacement in space-time, and the, the key thing is we're dividing here by the proper time, the time according to the object itself, d tau. So that leads to these two equations for the t and x parts of momentum. And uh, the t part of momentum, well, that seems weird. What is it? Because in classical physics, momentum is just x, y, z. And we saw that it made sense to identify this as e, so that the um, time component of momentum is actually the energy. Um, if you take this equation in the small v limit, in the non-relativistic limit, you get this. Um, so this would be the pt, or the energy, is m plus half mv squared. And if you convert to um, si, regular units, this and v is zero, that becomes mc squared. Um, in general, we define the kinetic energy as the energy minus the rest energy. This is the energy associated with simply existing not necessarily moving. Um, and then, let's see, we've got the momentum here. And if I divide this by this, um, I just get V. So that gives us really nice, simple relationship between relativistic energy, momentum, and the speed of the object. There's a quantity that's frame independent and when we're talking about um, special relativity momentum. And that turns out to be the mass, or mass squared, of the object. And the mass squared turns out to be e squared minus p squared. So this quantity is the same in all inertial reference frames. In different inertial reference frames, you might measure different values of e and p. Just like in different inertial reference frames, for an interval between two events, you'll measure different values of delta x and delta t. But all observers, once they do this calculation, will get the same number, and that number happens to be the square of the mass of the object. So. These are the basic definitions and relations among um, relativistic momentum in force space and then momentum and energy. So before we wrap up, there are two additional observations about energy and momentum that I'd like to make. The first has to do with energy. So for momentum, is conserved, and form momentum has a time part, energy, and a space part, regular momentum. And in a given reference frame, energy is conserved and the spatial momentum is conserved. All right, so conservation of energy, similar to that which we have in classical physics, but the equation um, is, is different because it's relativity. In particular, um, using the low velocity form, of the energy equation, that, right? That's energy equals m plus half m, uh, one half mv squared. So um, one half mv squared, that's the kinetic energy, but there's also this rest mass energy, m, or mc squared, if we're in regular units. So what that tells us is, is that energy can be converted into mass, and mass can be converted into kinetic energy without violating the conservation of energy and special relativity. So that's a new and interesting phenomena that has all sorts of um, applications and implications, particularly in nuclear and particle physics. The second observation I want to make is to think about, um, well, let's go back and think about space-time first. Right, so one of the key results, the key things of special relativity is that space and time are not these separate entities. They're part of this connected, indivisible whole called space-time. Observers in different reference frames may have some things as spatial, some things as temporal, and those get, may get mixed up, but there's that sort of underlying reality of space-time. And it's a similar story for energy and momentum. So the sort of underlying structure is the four-dimensional momentum, just like the underlying structure of the world is four-dimensional space-time. So we have four-dimensional momentum, and within that, we have energy and then three momenta, three spatial momenta. Just like in space-time, we have time and then three spatial directions. But in different reference frames, 
um, time and the three spatial dimensions may be different. And the same thing is true for energy and momentum. So um, we might have an object with a certain energy and a certain momentum, a different, uh, an observer in a different reference frame moving with respect to us would have a different value for energy and a different value for momentum. So energy and momentum are uh, inextricably linked, bound together in this unified four, uh, four momentum, just like space and time are inextricably linked, bound together in space-time. So this brings us to the end of the unit, and this is also the last full unit of the course, well, the last unit of the course. Um, we've made it to E equals mc squared, which was the one of the main goals I wanted to get to in this course. Um, following this, there'll be a short unit um, without any homework, um, summarizing a little bit, um, taking a broader view, and including some um, some comments by Minkowski and others about the nature of space-time and what space-time means. So that'll be coming up in the next unit, which will be just a few videos. See you then.